everyone, welcome to a fresh episode of A Spa. This is the 50th one. I'm Vikram. I'm Abha. We've got lots lined up for you on the show. Coming to you, as always, from TGIF here in Mumbai. Take a look at what's lined up. On the show this week, gadgets that can handle a splash this monsoon. In fact, we're telling you how you can waterproof every gadget you love. And hang out at these cafes with a European flavor. And on the spotlight this week, where do you go shopping for luxury brands in India? We take a look at all those hotspots. It's coming up in just a bit, but first, here's the buzz. Iconic British designer Sir Paul Smith has opened his first store in Mumbai's Palladium Mall. In the annex connecting the mall to the Shangri-La Hotel, this boutique is a 750 square feet space that has everything from ties to suits, bags and other quirky accessories. Another luxury brand, Mont Blanc, has a new set of limited edition pens. With 50 pieces, the Statue of Liberty Artisan Edition pays tribute to the freedom of America. And why 50? Well, it's the number of states in the USA. Also, two artisan edition Pablo Picasso writing instruments pay tribute to the Spanish artist, available from September with a starting price of $33,800. And Casino Royale, Ian Fleming's first James Bond novel. One more of the 4,728 first edition prints, back from 1953, goes on sale. The price this time, a staggering $78,000. But hey, this is where Bond was born. Alright, now that's the buzz that we're picking up this week. But in the spotlight, we're talking about shopping, something that Abha loves. And of course, we're talking about shopping for luxury. That's right. And in fact, in the past, many people used to go overseas for this. Today, of course, everything's available right here in India. We're going to take a closer look today at exactly where you would go shopping for luxury brands in India. New York's Fifth Avenue, London's Bond Street, Champs-Élysées in Paris, or the streets of Milan. These are the biggest fashion hubs of the world. And the world heads to these destinations to shop for the best in luxury. And ever since India has opened its arms to luxury brands, the rich and stylish do have places to go. But can these places take on the high streets you shop at abroad? In India, good high streets has been a challenge. So initially, most of these brands had no option but to open stores in five-star hotels. Hotels are a very limited option. You have limited visibility, footfall is limited. I guess it's phase one of uh, entry into India where brands wanted a secure environment. But uh, malls is the way forward. One such mall is Palladium located in the erstwhile textile mills area of Lower Burrell in central Mumbai. Spread over 200,000 square feet, the mall has four levels with a mix of premium brands like Zara and pure luxury brands like Burberry, Gucci and Armani. With concierge service, valet parking, fine dining and entertainment, the luxury mall tries to pack it all in. Bringing stronger focus on the luxury part of the retail business, the National Capital's ultra-luxurious DLF Emporium Mall, housing some of the biggest luxury labels, from Jimmy Choo to Christian Dior to Burberry and the first Christian Louboutin store in the country. But how far are luxury malls like these emerging as shopping destinations for the well-traveled? So a mall really brings in a captive uh, consumer uh, group in, in large numbers. So the malls guarantee Footfalls. A mall also offers a very good shopping environment uh, overall, which is what a brand looks for. But while we have malls like UB City in Bangalore and Emporium Mall in Delhi that offer a near pure luxury experience, malls like Palladium in Mumbai have a different business model, one in which you find the affordable kind of luxury sitting right next to the more exclusive luxury brands. The fact is, in India, the uh, luxury consumers are still few. Uh, maybe 300,000, 500,000 consumers. Um, the larger consumer base, uh, is several times more than that, is actually in the uh, super premium and the premium segment. Create a situation where the super premium and premium consumers can also come and shop 
uh, it, that's not a bad thing at all. Uh, to that extent, it allows you to uh, attract a larger uh, share of footfalls. And out of those consumers who are today premium or super premium shoppers, some of them will migrate to luxury. Uh, if you look at Emporio, for example, clearly uh, the zoning has been done. All the luxury brands are in one section of the mall, so they're protected. They get a footfall and a clientele which are focusing on, on purchases of luxury brands. You know, there are other mass market malls where we will never go to. There is a, a code of honor amongst luxury brands and uh, that must be maintained. And I think uh, UB City and DLF that way have got it perfectly right. But does this combination sit well with Indian luxury buyers who travel abroad for their shopping? The birthplace of luxury literally and that's Milan. So you're walking in the uh, uh, Victoria Emanuel, uh, you know, mall and it's, you know, full of street side. The mall in itself is full of street side cafes where you sit and have red wine. You're walking into Prada. Prada has the, you know, the, the latest seasons collection and India doesn't get that. So you get all old stock. The stock is not cutting edge. I don't get the feeling that we're getting the best of merchandise in India. So the luxury experience in a luxury space in India, in Bombay, in Delhi, it's not luxury. It's, it's you fending for yourself and getting, you know, something in a hurry. So you don't end up feeling it's a treat. So when you walk into a Louis Vuitton store, you're given the same experience you would receive in London, New York, Tokyo, Beijing, uh, the whole Ser selling ceremony is conducted in the same way, you're greeted in the same way. The store um, is exactly the same. The exclusivity is not merely of the merchandise on offer, but the shopping experience as a whole. While DLF Emporio sits next to the more pocket-friendly DLF Promenade, it houses brands like Benetton and eateries like McDonald's. Palladium in Mumbai is connected to High Street Phoenix that has brands like Lifestyle and Marks and & Spencer. We could create a high street environment like Bond Street or Avenue Montan, you know, in Paris or Fifth Avenue in New York, where all the luxury brands are in one line together in the street. But that I don't see that happening for a long time. So some of these brands, uh, some of our colleagues in different brands have taken an, uh, uh, a decision to go and, and create a standalone environment. Brands like Hermes, known for its iconic handbags, have kept away from malls and five-star hotels and opted for standalone stores in upmarket localities despite the high cost of land. And in doing this, they help the perception of the brand as a standalone one. One is finding the right uh, store at the right price in the right location. And because there are limited options, uh, the rentals are very, very high and that is one of the main uh, things that the brands are facing where their um, rent to revenue ratios could be very different from what they would be used to internationally. It is an interesting idea and somebody has to push the envelope but it's also there's a huge risk attached to it and how many people would come all the way to see you if you're standing all alone in some corner? They would rather come and see a range of stores you know, spend the whole day, you know, in a mall, it's a closed environment, even if it's raining or it's hot, there's air conditioning, uh, you go and have lunch, you invite your friends, it's a far more friendly environment to be in today. But I agree, I mean, uh, there are some outstanding buildings in Bombay and Calcutta which could be converted. The historical buildings and brands would like to have their standalone uh, options uh, and make use of them. But today it's a little early, in my opinion. While options for luxury shoppers do exist, they are limited in number for the kind of growth expected in the future. And until then, the industry will see more shoppers migrate from affordable luxury to pure luxury. At least, that's the hope. Well, everyone says that India is a curious mix and particularly so when it comes to the world of luxury because the kind of model that we are seeing develop 
is quite unique that affordable luxury needs to sit next to luxury. It is. It's something that you don't really see anywhere else in the world. And it's a market that's still growing. It's in a very nascent stage, so it'll be interesting to see how it develops further. We take a little breather right now on this edition of Aspire, but on the other side, we're talking about gadgets that can handle a splash and take a beating. And hang out at these cafes with a European flavor.